Here we are, folks. I'm standing on the Emmitsburg Road and looking north towards the town of Gettysburg. And this is my dear wife standing in front of our home for the next month, the Klingo House. Greetings from our kitchen, because we can't be with you today, which is what we would much prefer. Oh, indeed. What a pity. Uh, although, it would be nice if you were here with us, too, so yes. it goes yes. both ways. <laughs> I'm Pat Bauer. I'm a retired history teacher and uh, author of Bees for Battle Cry, a Civil War alphabet, which was illustrated by my dear husband. David Geister. I'm a picture book illustrator, a history painter, and a monster kid. Uh, and, he uh, is. It's true. And uh, we had the most amazing experience uh, just over two years ago. Yes. We were the artists in residence for the uh, Gettysburg National Battlefield uh, Park. And this happened in autumn of 2019, just before COVID and everything came apart at the seams. So our timing was amazing, mm -hmm. fortuitous, some would say. Yes. And we're both storytellers in our own way. Obviously, his and his paintings and drawings. I do in my um, poems and songs. I am not a trained musician at all. I'm a, I'm a folk singer who has enjoyed it for years and years, and I shared music with my students and sang a lot with them, and it was a, just a joy to be able to have that month in Gettysburg in the Klingel House, which is where we lived, which was there at the time of the battle, and uh, to be away from everything and to be able to concentrate on those stories there at Gettysburg. It was wonderful. You know, the whole point of our even doing this presentation is to just reinforce what we feel is the need to connect to historic sites by visiting them and then sharing the stories that you hear there. Uh, for me, it's never been enough to simply visit a museum or read a book about some moment in history. I always feel the need to do something with that story. And I don't feel as though the experience is complete until I've processed it, if you will, uh, interpreted it, whether it's with a paintbrush or pen and ink, or in the case of my dear wife, beautiful music or poems. And we really hope that you and your students have the opportunity to do the same thing, regardless of where that site might be. Mm -hmm. I would take my students to historic Fort Snelling, which is very close to here in the Twin Cities. And when we returned from that wonderful experience, we would uh, design postcards, uh, write poems, uh, do illustrations of our favorite parts of the, the fort. And I think that encouraging that creativity is something that that is something that teachers are able to do. And it's a really, really important aspect of education. There are so many stories uh, that make up you know, the American story and oftentimes significant parts of the, uh, the population are, are really never heard from, at least in most of the history books. Uh, Fortunately, that's changing these days. Thank goodness. Yes, that's thank right. goodness. Uh, there was a significant uh, African-American population, a freed population in Gettysburg at the time of the battle. And uh, a number of these folks fled to escape being captured and hauled south into the Confederacy where they would be enslaved. Uh, a number of 
these folks in Adams County, which is where Gettysburg is located, were in fact taken by the Confederates. It, it's one of the great unspoken stories, if you will, of that whole experience. So we would encourage you to really try to uh, learn more about that. Uh, there is a very thriving and vibrant African-American community in Gettysburg right now, and I believe they're working on putting together uh, a museum of sorts about that experience. Yes. Yes. So we look forward to, uh, to visiting that and hearing those stories. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, this brings us back to the Klingel House and the fact that we almost always hear about it from the perspective of Daniel Klingel. Mm -hmm. So I tried to focus a little bit more on Hannah, his wife, because she, of course, was there doing pretty much everything that Daniel was doing, but she also had those two young children and, you know, being responsible for, you know, the meals and all those kinds of things that are left out of history. Some of the most important parts of uh, the human experience, unfortunately, mm -hmm. left out. Uh, do you think you could be persuaded to perform the ballad of the Klingel House mm -hmm. for these folks? I would be honored. This log house on the Emmitsburg Road, a young family, small abode, where Daniel farmed was a cobbler too. Hannah worked hard as the children grew. Apple and peach trees on their land, but life didn't turn out as they planned. General Lee marched his army north just a few days before July 4th. Hannah looked out the window to see soldiers with axes at great speed. Chopping down fences to make their way And this, my friends, was just the first day Soon men in gray covered the floor The family gave them water, but they needed much more No doctors to be found So the dead were laid out on the ground Why did this war come to our farm? How can we keep the children from harm? Everything's gone up in smoke All of our dreams and all of our hopes The year was 18 and 63. The family was ordered to leave, but Daniel refused to go, saying, if I'm to die, I'd rather die at home. But the soldiers forced them to run, the men in blue, they shot their guns out of windows and doors And all around the cannons roared The family came back the 4th of July When they saw their home they started to cry Union soldiers sitting on chairs Most everything else looked beyond repair But Hannah baked bread as fast as she could All the men were hungry 
It tasted so good For days they took care of the men And wished that their lives Could go back again to their Quiet log house on the Emmitsburg Road My young family's small abode Where Daniel farmed was a cobbler too Hannah worked so hard as the children grew I've been drawing and painting Civil War subjects for much of my life. Uh, and this visit really, truly uh, inspired me. And I'd like to show you some of what I created. So let's, uh, let's head up to the studio. Yes. Well, here we are in the studio. I'm not gonna show you the whole studio, all right? It's a disaster. It's a working space. So I've got various paintings, uh, art materials, dinosaurs, you know, the usual, scattered all around. We're gonna focus instead on this and uh, the artwork that I created at Gettysburg just a couple of years ago during the Artist in Residence program. All right. This was the largest piece that I worked on that came out of that visit, uh, but for me personally, the sketchbook that I worked in on the battlefield was really the single most important component, I guess, because I have a memory of sitting on the battlefield in my little chair and observing what was out in front of me. You know, there were, there were crickets, the wind was blowing, might have been a warm day, might have been a cold day. People stopped by from all over the world and chatted with me. So it was an experience that went above and beyond simply capturing an image of what was in front of me. And at very least, that sketchbook serves now as kind of a reminder, a memento of uh, the time that Pat and I spent on the battlefield for that entire month. In some ways, though, those sketches also serve as inspiration for future paintings. So do you remember that night when that cricket was so loud in yes. our bedroom in the Klingel house that I couldn't sleep? But you could. Well, I have really bad hearing. <laughs> Trust me, I could hear that cricket, just not as loudly as you could. But I it, definitely remember that. It was so loud. They make really loud crickets in Pennsylvania. They must. Yes. And... Uh, I mentioned that the next day when I was talking on the telephone to my friend Dina and she said, you know, that sounds like it should be a song. <laughs> and she's not a songwriter or anything, but she had this in her head. And about half an hour later, she called me back and she kind of hummed a little bit and, and did, did a few um, lines of a, what would become the song called The Cricket Lullaby. And uh, I did it, again, thinking of perhaps a first Minnesota soldier who is very, very far from home and very lonely. So here's the cricket lullaby. Enjoy. Cricket, oh cricket, sing for me You are my only company Only you and a sea of stars This war has taken me so far Away from my home I am so alone I miss my wife and my babes my own cricket oh cricket sing for me 
You are my only company I remember when I was fancy free And I go out dancing with my sweet Marie But the president called and I had to go Now I'm marching with my comrades down the road I've got no more food in my pack But if I did, I'd share my heart attack Cricket, oh cricket, sing for me You are my only company Cricket, oh cricket, I've seen so much pain I just hope that it wasn't all in vain We've got to march further down the road And we all carry such a heavy load When we get to the crossroads, then we'll fight I hope I live to see twilight then cricket, oh cricket, please sing for me. You are my only company, only you and a sea of stars. This war has taken me so far away from my home. I am so alone. I miss my wife. And my babes, my own Cricket, oh cricket, please sing for me Because this war is now my destiny Well, my dear? Yes. Do you have anything to share with us? I do. Let's go up to the studio. Good. You might be able to tell this painting is its not done. I started it two years ago on the battlefield uh, in the upstairs of the Klingel House. I could look out the window of the studio that direction under the battlefield and see the area where the first Minnesota had started their charge and then come this way towards the viewer. So couldn't ask for a better viewpoint. But it still requires a little bit of work. Uh, there are a few faces up there that aren't done yet and a few details that need to be added and then a little more ferocity, a little more uh, energy, if you will. It's a scene I've always wanted to capture. It complements my overhead bird's eye view that I did for the 150th commemoration of the Battle of Gettysburg a few years ago. And um, I think what will happen next, if you will, in this sort of this, this, I don't want to call it a triptych, it's really more of a trilogy, if you think in terms of a story. Uh, we'll start with the big overhead view, then we'll go to this view where we're seeing the men up close. And then finally, we'll see the aftermath. And what we will probably see is one of these soldiers burying his brother. There are two brothers in this picture, the Taylor brothers. One of them dies during the charge. Uh, we'll see one of the brothers burying his slain sibling the morning after the battle. And that'll be very close. And uh, it will largely just focus on two individuals. So. In every one of these paintings, I've, I've went from the grand, you know, to the not quite so grand, to the very intimate. And that'll be a way of sort of wrapping up, if you will, my imagining, my interpretation of the charge of the 1st Minnesota Regiment at the Battle of Gettysburg. Another story which I made into a song, is about a young woman named Tilly Pierce. She was 15 years old at the time of the battle. Mm -hmm. And we kind of knew about her years before, but not a lot. And why was that? 
Well, we knew that she and her family took care of Minnesota's Colonel William Colville after his horrible wounding during the famous charge at the Battle of Gettysburg. We'd always heard mention of this Tilly Pierce. Mm -hmm. And I know that our first visit there, we of course had to check and see where the house was. We've been back several times, mm -hmm. but we never really dug that deeply into her story. And uh, thanks to you, we know more about her now. Yeah. Well, thanks to her because she wrote her memoir yes. a number of years later. That's and that's true. one reason we know quite a bit about her. Uh, she, she was with her family and then she traveled with her neighbors with two, a woman and two young girls, the Shriver family, and they headed south of town. And she had quite the experience while she was gone. Oh, and, yes. Yes, and eventually came back. Her family barely recognized her. This was only a few days later. Right. But she was, in the, she was just so dirty and covered with blood and mud and all kinds of things. Yep. And uh, she came back and helped her family take care of these men, as did virtually every family in Gettysburg. Uh, yep. Every building, the, everything was a hospital because so many men were there it, who were wounded. Exactly. And, and I can't remember the exact number, but of a town of approximately somewhere between 2,000 and 2,400 residents, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the battle, I think there were something like 20,000 wounded yeah. soldiers on the field. Imagine what that would be like, you yeah. know, where you live if, if that right. happened. And uh, once soldiers are moved out of the field hospital, some of them were brought into the homes of the residents of Gettysburg. Some died there, some recovered there, as Minnesota's William Colville did, mm -hmm. thank goodness. And uh, years later, he returned and, and got a chance mm -hmm. to, uh, to speak with, with uh, the, the Pierce family again. Mm -hmm. So would you... Be willing to sing that song for us? I most certainly would. <laughs> it's a good story. She needs to be remembered. Yes. Okay. A girl named Tilly lived on Baltimore Street. Her life was quiet till that July day When soldiers marched into Gettysburg town And she was caught in the midst of the fray Oh Tilly, won't you go fetch water for the men They've been marching since way before dark Though you are so young, on you we can depend To lend a hand till the soldiers are gone Till he traveled with friends to find a safe place To a farm just south of town But there were lead balls and shells and smoke everywhere and bodies strewn over the ground the cannons were firing from little round top rebel rifles had them in their sights four union officers lay dead on the porch Part of the price for this terrible fight Till he went back home and cared for the men Wounded soldiers laid out on the floor As this brave girl worked, she prayed all the while For an end to this terrible war Oh Tilly won't you go Fetch water for the men They've been marching Since way before dawn And though you are so young 
on you we can depend to lend a hand till the soldiers are gone and there's an end to this terrible If you know much of anything about Gettysburg, you've probably heard about the Peach Orchard. It's a kind of iconic place, and a terrible, terrible battle happened there. It was on the Scherfee Farm, which is very close to the Klingel Farm. We walked in it frequently and ate peaches from it. Well, there were stories of men who returned to the Peach Orchard and to other parts of Gettysburg. It was it was quite a... a tourism mecca for a while after the battle and uh, many of them were soldiers who were returning and so I was after doing a lot of reading and learning more about what had happened there I wrote this poem about a man who returned in the next year and was looking back at what had happened and how horrible it was and also kind of looking at the future with the hope that this sort of thing would never happen again. The Peach Orchard. I stand in the orchard under the trees. It's been more than a year. The peaches are ripe now and juice runs down my chin. They were tiny and green when last I stood here. The house was riddled with holes then. The barn, a pile of ashes, a blanket that covered men's bones. Bloated bodies, horses and men, littered the farmyard. I greet Mrs. Scherfee and tell her who I am, the soldier who ordered her family to flee. I fear what she will say, but she welcomes me with a smile and shows me her trophies the jars of peaches, survivors of the battle that she harvested and preserved. She hands me one, and I am grateful. Back under the trees, I wonder, will there ever be enough raindrops to wash away the blood? Enough children's laughter to drown out the cries that still hang in the air? Enough sweetness from the ripe peaches to mask the stench of rotting flesh, enough love and kindness to banish hate. You probably know what a lament is, a story or a song or a poem that is very sad. Uh, and I decided to write a lament from the point of view of a woman whose sweetheart is in the first Minnesota and is very far away from home and has been far away from home for several years. And in this poem, I, or in this, actually it's a song, I trace the, the travels and the battles that her sweetheart has been in until he gets to Gettysburg. And I guess they'll have to listen to the song to find out what happens. It is called a lament, after yes. all. Yes. I don't know why the sun is still in the sky. And please tell me why the moon hovers on high. The guns are all quiet now, but we must tell the tale. While the fireflies dance in the swale, while the fireflies dance in the swale. My sweetheart, he promised that he would come home. 
And I was foolish enough to believe him Too long years for him I did yearn And now I know that he'll never return I know he'll never return The first battle he fought was at a place called Bull Run Just a few months after he left me The men stood their ground stayed long on the field and showed just how brave they could be showed how brave they could be at Yorktown he was sick from being out in the rain But then he helped build a bridge in four days. He fought at Fair Oaks, Savage Station, and White Oak Swamp. When Nary an hour was calm, Nary an hour was calm. After Antietam, my sweetheart wrote me a note. He told the bodies piled high in the lane that winter a battle in Fredericksburg. He wrote the first shall never be deterred. The first shall never be deterred My sweetheart scrawled a letter While on the march To a crossroads called Gettysburg The newspapers said the battle lasted three days my dear one died in plum run far away yes he died in that swale far away and now i don't know why the sun is still in the sky and please tell me why the moon hovers on high. The guns are all silent now, and we must tell the tale. While the fireflies dance in the swale, the fireflies dance in the sway Well, I'm getting a little tired of talking and singing. So how about if we head up to the studio oh. and see some of your work? Let's do it. Follow me. The, the project that I worked on that was the public component, if you will, of our Gettysburg Artists in Residence I decided early on that I wanted to create a project that the public, the visiting public, could add paint to. Now, the painting itself was not particularly large, but I think we had more than 300 visitors 
to the uh, main museum, the visitor center at Gettysburg, stop by over one weekend and add their dabs of paint here or there. Some of them were reluctant. I'd say, well, you know what? If you make a mistake, I can always correct it. Uh, some were very enthusiastic. And uh, in fact, we had them put their names in a little book. And when all was said and done and the painting was completed, I framed it. And then I actually framed the book with the names of all the people that had helped paint it. And we gave that to the park as sort of a thank you for letting us stay in a historic building, uh, the, uh, the Klingel House, right in the middle of the battlefield. People often ask me, where does my fascination with history and particularly the Civil War and the Battle of Gettysburg come from? Well, in part, it's because my grandmother read a book to me about that battle when I was a young boy. And the stories of the women and the men that suffered through that period have been with me ever since. So I suppose, you know, that, that is the single most important component. The fact that an adult in my life took the time to read a story to me and recognize that I had an interest in the subject matter. And it helped set me on this path. Shortly before we left Gettysburg and the Klingel House, I was cleaning the house because I wanted to leave it in good shape. And I was washing the kitchen floor, which wasn't very big and I didn't have a mop. So I was on my hands and knees. And I just had this image of Hannah Klingel doing the same kind of thing. Her kitchen would have looked quite different, but her house was filled with wounded soldiers. And there were, first there were Confederates and then there were, were um, Union soldiers. And I just had this vision of her cleaning up with this, with this rag washing the floor and that there was blood and she was thinking about the loved ones in the South who were, who had lost their child or brother or husband. And uh, that's how this poem came to be. Blood on my floor, down on my knees, wiping up blood, with great sorrow, I render this chore, wishing to God that the rag held only mud. A boy won't go home because his blood's on my floor. Somewhere in the South, a mother waits for her boy to walk through the door. Every day that he's gone, oh, how her heart aches. But he won't be home. His blood's on my floor. This young rebel may have been brave, though he fought for a cause we deplore. Now he's laid out in his grave. He won't be home because his blood's on my floor. I hug my babies so closely tonight and pray that there'll be no more war. The boy's mother doesn't yet know his plight, that he won't be home because his blood's on my floor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've sat through a lot of pretty sad songs. And uh, as much as I really liked writing them and telling these stories, it got to be a little heavy after a while. And I decided that I needed to have a more upbeat song. So I wrote a song called The Ghost Tour Blues. If you've ever been to Gettysburg, can you describe a little bit of the atmosphere at times? There are times when the atmosphere is almost like a carnival. Well, that, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but on the main drag closest to the battlefield, there are a number of businesses that cater to everything. They sell toy soldiers to people like me. They sell t-shirts to just about anybody who wants one and, and, and soldiers caps and toy guns and whatnot. They will also sell you ghost tours. There are a number of competing businesses selling ghost tours. My own personal feeling is, however one communes with the battle, 
that's fine by me. Uh, no judgment whatsoever, although we probably won't be taking a tour anytime soon. Uh, but uh, I like what she did with this song <laughs> because it, uh, it strikes pretty close to home to anybody from Gettysburg who's listened to it. They, mm -hmm. they, they immediately start laughing because they know exactly where it's going. Well, I'm a-walking down the road in old Gettysburg. Yeah, I'm walking down the road in old Gettysburg. Someone taps me on the arm and says, won't you take a tour? Because we've got ghosts to the left spirits on our right yeah we've got ghosts to the left spirits on our right shadows in the alley on this summer night well do you see her in the doorway looks like jenny way Oh, do you see her in the doorway, the ghost of Jenny Way? Then I'll hold up this lantern, don't you be afraid. Well, I went downtown to get an ice cream cone. Yeah, I went downtown by me and ice cream cone All I want to do is lick it Please leave me alone I've got the ghost tour blues here in Gettysburg Yeah, I've got the ghost tour blues right here in Gettysburg I want my spirits from the tavern. I don't want no tour. But we've got ghosts to the left, spirits on our right. Yeah, we've got ghosts to the left, and spirits on our right. Shadows in the alley on this summer night well folks I hope you didn't find that song too scary I did <laughs> we are hoping that you found some inspiration in what we did in this presentation right uh, if anything we encourage you to find a way in your world uh, your family, your students, to uh, turn history into art. Cheers. Cheers.